special guest. We've got Dara from Magenta Otter Travels. Hi, Dara. Hello. I am a crazy American Anglophile, and I decided a year ago that I was going to start a YouTube channel to be a place where Brits and Anglophiles from around the world could talk about British stuff. British language, culture, travel, and my favorite thing, food. <laughs> it's our favorite thing too. Absolutely. <laughs> we are going to be sharing 10 words and phrases that we have started using since moving to the USA. And Dara is going to offer her thoughts on them. Number one, booty or booty. This area. <laughs> I started mm. using booty instead of bottom or bum, which um, I would only really use in the UK to refer to little shoes for children, booties. I don't think that's a word I grew up hearing or using. I think it's a newer word in the grand scheme of things and came into parlance with the phrase shake your booty, referring to dancing. Crack the window. I heard my husband say it first of all and thought, why does he want me to break that window in the car? <laughs> but I like it. You just want it open a little bit, just to crack, mm -hmm. crack the window. And what would you say instead in Britain? Oh, just open it up a little bit. Oh, oh that's much words. longer to say. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you could say pop the window open. Oh, yes, pop the that's window. That's very British. If you said pop the window open, I wouldn't know how far, but if you said yeah. just crack the window, I'd know. Yeah. There you go, yeah. It does, it has that perfect visual image of that, just that little bit. This video is going to be part of a series. If you head on over to Magenta Otter Travels today, you'll see Dara's words and phrases from Britain that she finds herself using. So head on over and check out that video after this one. Okay, this word is very American and I can't actually believe I say it, but since getting a puppy, I found myself saying, go party. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of wearies, wearies. <laughs> That I would usually say. Not to her husband, but to the dog. <laughs> you know, there's obviously a need for consistency, so whatever my husband started saying, I now say. But I also say it in the accent, or my best attempt at the accent, because if you say it in British, it sounds like you're telling us to go a bit nuts. Yes, go, go potty. potty. Potty is, is insane. <laughs> yeah, yes. go potty. Yes, no, if you're saying it with an American accent, it's potty, with, with, with the D sound, which is just an annoying thing we do, pronouncing our T's like D's truck. I used to always say lorry and didn't realize at first that that wasn't a word over here and then I realized I was getting very strange looks. You guys call a truck anything from a huge vehicle to like a pickup truck which is so prevalent in the US. So now I just use the word truck. I think we like in some instances general terms that apply to just a whole lot of things. So truck is anything from a little pickup truck to a giant semi truck in the same way that pants are just things that you wear on the bottom. They're just bottoms, it's everything. Whereas in Britain, you're more specific. It's trousers, slacks, jeans. Restroom or bathroom. This is what I changed because it's just polite out here, I think. Restroom or bathroom. People love when you say loo, but if you're desperate or something, you can't say loo because then you have to have a whole conversation about the word loo before you can go. I don't think Americans like if you just say toilet, where's the toilet? That's something that we would say in the UK, mm, but maybe yeah. they don't like it here. We feel like the word toilet is just really crass. It's kind of like, where's the toilet? It's not a room, it's literally that ceramic thing that <laughs> you... <laughs> go potty in. <laughs> so we just wouldn't want to say that. If you're in a nice restroom, we would never say, where's the toilet? It's like, where's the John? It's just very <laughs> crap. The next thing is something that Americans say on the phone and that I say all the time now. It's, mm, bye. It's, it's this little, mm, before you say bye, mm, bye. And, uh, <laughs> I, it's very hard to do it when you're actually not doing it. It's one of those things. You know, that's one thing that I don't think I would even know if I said. I think it's a subconscious thing that we do, and it's only when someone else hears you doing it that you notice you're doing it. I think it's our way of sliding into saying goodbye. Because if you just said bye, that would be so abrupt. Yeah. So I guess it's a way of saying mm, bye. I think these words are great, whether you're using the British term or the American term, both of them are fabulous. In Britain it would be dressing gown, and in America it would be robe. 
Now I use robe just because it sounds so glamorous. Absolutely, <laughs> like your royalty, you've got your robe on. Yeah. yeah. But dressing gown is wonderful too. It's very Oscar Wilde. Oh, you yes. can imagine sitting there in his dressing gown, you know, it's got yes. this wonderful image about it. The generation older than me would also say house coat. That was probably more of a female thing, but there were these little, you know, zip up house coats that yes, yes. women would wear when they're doing the ironing and, you know, household yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's another thing about robe is that in Britain, you have judges wearing robes and, you know, you go to Oxford and Cambridge and people are walking around in robes. And so there's a lot more of a formality that I think we don't really have. So the only robes that people are going to really think about regularly are house coats or bath robes. Closet instead of wardrobe. I think the wardrobe is technically something different. It's, mm. you know, a standalone item. But closet kind of was a bit challenging at first because we have the water closet, which is another word for bathroom. <laughs> I think also, Lucy, because here we have walking closets, mm. closet then actually comes more into its own because you imagine this bigger space, this dressing room. If you are in Britain and you're in a flat that has a built-in closet, so it's not a wardrobe, right? It's just a built in to the wall. Would you ever call it a cupboard? Yeah. A cupboard or a wardrobe. Or a wardrobe, yeah. That's crazy talk. No, that doesn't make any sense at all to an American. And I think because of the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, we know about an armoire being a wardrobe, but a wardrobe has to be a piece of furniture. The fact that a closet that's built into the wall with sliding doors could be called a wardrobe is also just very confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's another one which we've kind of extended the meaning, I suppose, mm -hmm. to mean anything that you can contain clothes in, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, or like hanging clothes at least. Have a nice rest of your day. I've noticed actually that Americans don't actually say have a nice day so much anymore. And I don't know if it's because of being kind of ridiculed or because it seems like a customer service thing and people don't really mean it and it's said with over the top jolliness. Do you say have a nice rest of your day, dear? I, I say have a nice day. I'm an old lady. I say have a nice day. <laughs> but do you find that term is diminishing now that it's not said so often? I've really noticed that. Maybe. I haven't been out much in the last year. <laughs> it's true. Sweater. I use sweater now too, but I avoided it for a while because it's not, it doesn't sound particularly nice. No. Sweater. We call sweaters jumpers, and apparently it comes from the French word jupe, which means a long sort of coat. Here's what's confusing about our two cultures and those words. In the US, things that are made out of yarn are sweaters, right? So it could be a pullover sweater, a crew neck sweater, v neck sweater or it could be a cardigan. A cardigan is a sweater. Brits are focused on how you put it on. If you button it up the front, it's cardigan. If you pull it over your head, it doesn't matter what it's made out of, it's a jumper. Yeah. And that was so confusing because to us, a jumper is a dress with the strappy things. If you've enjoyed this video, then please hit subscribe because this video is going to be part of a series and next we're going to be talking about words and phrases from our adopted culture that we would never use. Please like this video if you've enjoyed it and leave a comment below if you have something to say on any of our words, I'm sure some of you do. And we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.